Hi, my name is Alex Josh, and I'm a senior product line manager on the VMware Cloud and AWS product team. Today, we're going to be taking a deeper dive into the product and kind of walking through some of the things that we announced on October 13th. So uh, what we're talking about here is uh, what we refer to as VMware Cloud on AWS, or VMC for short. And in short, what it is, is it's a native implementation of vSphere, vSAN, and NSX running on top of an AWS data center. Um, the really exciting thing here is that this is a next generation bare metal implementation from AWS. So what you're getting is a full vSphere experience, including ESX, um, and it's managed by VMware, sold as a service from us. So what that means is, is that you don't have to worry about things like hardware installation or patching or failed systems or anything like that. You're renting servers by the hour from us. Um, you get your own uh, VC, you get your own implementation of vSAN, and the hardware is dedicated to you. It's not shared hardware. So it's very different than some of the other things that you might have seen in the market. The power of this is that you get the full advantage of the AWS platform. Um, that includes the ability to add and remove hardware, that includes networking components, but also probably more importantly, it includes access to the underlying AWS services. So for example, if you wanted to consume a service like RDS or Redshift, you can do so from the VMs that are running in your VMC, uh, running in your VMC cluster, but connected through the network to the underlying AWS services. So that's a, pretty, um, that's a pretty amazing experience. We're really excited about that. So stepping back about how you would implement this, the, the idea here is that you would deploy these clusters onto existing AWS um, regional data centers, so AWS regions, and then you would connect them together via VPN or other mechanisms. And those would in turn be connected to your existing on-premise data center. So in this picture, what you're seeing is this customer has deployed five different um, VMC clusters on five different AWS regions. And then they have three on-premise data centers, which are also connected in a mesh, mesh for, fashion. So in effect, what's happening is they've extended their private environment, their private cloud, up into the AWS infrastructure. So AWS is hosting it, it's running in the AWS region, but all the networking is private, all the routing is private, all the instances are, in effect, inside the corporate firewall. Making this work is um, using the edge topology from the underlying VMC service. So as you can see in this, um, in this screen here, we're going to allow a couple of different ways of doing that. Um, and what we see here is either adding a point-to-point -point VPN or um, a direct connect option. And those are probably going to be the two most common ways um, to go about this. Um, we have a lot of choices in how we connect. Um, for customers that are already using AWS, you may already have what's called a direct connect. Um, and for those of you that are not familiar, basically a direct connect is a, a low latency, high bandwidth connection directly into the AWS infrastructure. Um, and they do that through colos. Um, the other choices are to use site-to-site -site VPNs. So if you currently use Juniper or Cisco or most of the other major VPN providers, you can basically set up a logical connection between your private network um, and the network we're using for VMC. Um, or you can use NSX to do this. Um, so for customers that have NSX on-premise already, all the facilities of NSX will continue to work. And in fact, we will deploy NSX inside of your VMC cluster. You don't have to have NSX on-premise. You can use your existing networking gear but you can do it either way, so it's your choice. So another aspect of this is when it comes to capacity management. So you're probably familiar with DRS. Um, DRS has been around for a long time, and it's a great feature. And in fact, it's the most commonly used um, feature within vSphere. But v DRS does have limits, right? In the end, you only have so much hardware available to the DRS cluster. And when you fill that capacity, at some point you're just gonna run out, and you just can't go any further. And so the question happens is, well, what happens when, you're, when DRS has just run out of capacity? What do you do next? Well, traditionally on premise, what you would do is you would go and rack and stack another server or add a server to the network, and some manual processes would, would ensue. However, because we're sitting on top of AWS's infrastructure, we have a lot more options here. Um, we can actually dynamically add capacity and then use Elastic DRS to then manage that capacity as part of our cluster. So in effect, what happens is DRS now has the ability to grow or shrink the cluster depending on how much capacity you're using, um, which, if you think about it, is a very cloud-like experience because we're using the underlying facilities that AWS gives us. 
Um, this is a really exciting feature, and I think we've just started to scra scratch the surface on this one. Uh, as in a related note, we also have the ability to auto-remediate um, hardware failures. Um, the important thing to note here is, as we mentioned, this is a service from VMware. You're renting uh, ESX servers by the hour from us. So the implication is, is that if you rent four physical machines from me, you're paying for four servers, you're going to get four servers. If one of them fails, it's not your problem to fix it. That's my problem. And so what we've done is we've built automation into the back end that allows us to automatically repair uh, failed equipment. So if we detect through ESX that there is a, you know, a problem with the system, we see a drive has failed, there's a memory problem, whatever, what we'll do is we'll proactively take action. We'll insert a new host uh, into the cluster, and we will uh, put the, the failed host into, um, put the failed host into um, maintenance mode, and then we'll use that to drain the system out. And uh, over time, what will happen is the workload will move to the new host and away from the older host. Then once that old host is drained, it will be removed from the cluster. Now, during this period, you won't be charged for the extra host. You're only going to be charged for the four hosts that you're paying for. And this is all on us. So there's a little bit of a give-get here. So you're giving up a little bit of control. So you don't, for example, you don't get to decide when the hosts are patched. But what you're getting in return is a guaranteed level of service from VMware. So um, hopefully that was interesting for you. And uh, you know, we're really excited about this service. So thank you very much for your attention today. Mm -hmm.